was the 1980s when I finished high school and went to music university. Think Crocodile Dundee, Top Gun, like the first Top Gun, right? But Ben here, how old are you? 18? 18. 18. Yeah. So you're finishing high school this year or finishing school this year and heading off to music university. Yeah. That's like 40 years after me. So what's changed? Is it different? Is it easier? Is it harder? What does a career look like for a saxophone player these days? Well, that's the stuff we're gonna dig into in the video today. <laughs> Okay, so if I'm honest, Ben, this does make me feel a bit old, this video, because I'm like 53, you're 18, big difference. But what I thought was interesting when I met you the other day is that your journey is actually almost identical to what my journey was like yeah. all those years ago. So I remember when I was heading off to university and I, I was finishing high school, I had this idea in my mind that the best gig I could possibly do would be maybe go and play on a TV show or something like that. And then by the time yeah. I finished university, all those TV show gigs were kind of over. Mm. But uh, I'm wondering for you, in 2023, like, have you got an idea of what your career might be like? Oh, hey guys, I'm just going to jump in and say that Ben is actually just a local player in my local town. I met recently and I thought it'd be an interesting conversation to have a chat with him about what he's doing in music versus what my background is, right? If you enjoy this kind of content though, let me know in a comment down below. Do you want to see more of this? I'd love to know. All right, back to the conversation. I don't think I've got like any concrete idea. But for me, like I'll measure my success on just being able to perform for a living and, and not have to, you know, do all these other bits and bats, just being able to, to go out there and play my saxophone and that be enough to get by. Wouldn't that be awesome? That'd be ace. So, you know, I've often thought that in my life too. So just being able to play saxophone, make money and, and like have a career doing that. Yeah. What yeah. an awesome thing to do. That's... So I was going to ask you then, you live in Yorkshire and you're going off to the Birmingham Conservatoire. Yeah. So that's a classical degree, right? It is, yeah. yeah. So I'm curious to know, why did you choose to do a classical degree? So for me, it was like, I wasn't even sure that classical saxophone was the right way for me. But it all came about because I went to a jazz open day at the Guildhall School in London. And I just realised I really didn't want to restrict myself for four years doing one genre of music. And I felt that doing a classical saxophone degree I would kind of get the basis of training, but still be able to, to play lots of different genres just on the saxophone, do a degree in the saxophone, not some specific mm -hmm. kind of just doing jazz. Yeah, no, I completely get that. And see, that's another thing that's similar between you and me, right? So it was 1987 when I went off to university. I know that seems like black and white, <laughs> olden days. We didn't have a horse and cart, we had no. a car, we had a car. But uh, I actually went and did a classical degree as well. And the reason for me back then was, there just were fewer choices of courses, right? You're very fortunate living in England. Yeah. Like you talk about the Guildhall, the Birmingham Conservatoire. We've got the Leeds Conservatoire nearby. You've got the RNCM, RNCM in Manchester. Yeah. So there's lots of options. For me, I come from the north of Australia and uh, I went to the music conservatorium in my state, which was 24 hours away on a bus. It was a long way away, yeah. right? And actually, they did have a jazz program there, but it was it wasn't really as good as the classical program, which was really, really good. Yeah, yeah. So I always thought, I'll do a classical program and then just do as many jazz classes as I can. And you reckon at Birmingham you'll have a chance to do lots of other styles as well while you're there? Yeah, so one of the big things that kind of persuaded me to choose Birmingham was they've got a whole ethos about um, encouraging creativity and different kinds of music. They have um, a really exciting folk ensemble, which is like a 40 plus uh, number of, of players sax players, string players, vocalists, everything, um, working without sheets, without dots, and they just play like the most crazy fusion, exciting folk music, and they go and tour the UK, and you get like, you know, classical vocalists there, but also like the people on the pop course, so it's a really exciting ensemble. Oh, wow, so, and they've got a pop course there too, you say? I don't think they do, I think I just, <laughs> I just said that wrong. <laughs> That sounds really, really cool though. And you know, I think that's one of the great things about a conservatorium or, or just studying music in general at university because you're gonna meet and interact with all sorts of different people and it's gonna open up lots of different possibilities for you. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> that really got me going with saxophone was actually a Glenn Miller big band album. Right, right? yeah, yeah. So, which was oldie, oldie worldy back then, but I love the sound of the saxophone and that, that sort of got me interested in a whole bunch of jazz stuff. So that was the thing that I loved. What about you then? So learning today, I mean, you're the same age as my boys. So 
What was the saxophone music that got you excited? So, like, when I first started, it was um, lots of kind of kind of more obvious stuff. So, like, hearing, like, Careless Whisper and, and all those big sax solos in, in pop songs that everyone knows, but you don't know why you know it. And that was like, oh, that's a saxophone. That's pretty cool. Um, and then I kind of got listening to more sax players sort of a couple, maybe three, four years ago. Um, and that's when I started to discover people like Gerald Albright, Mindy Abair, Eric Darius. And they've got this... Ace, like Dave Coz is another one, this massive, uh, contemporary, edgy sound that just really excited me. And then on top of that, kind of in the classical scene with, with people like Timothy McAllister, Arno Bornkamp, Jess Gillum and what they're doing, and that sound was really, really interesting to me. And the, the music they're playing as well isn't, doesn't feel like classical saxophone. It, it's something new, it's refreshing. Obviously, the internet wasn't even invented, right, when, yeah. I was, when I was learning. So for me, I learned in school, and then I had a local teacher, and then I used to use these black round things called records, and I used to listen What's to that? them. What's that? Yeah, I used to listen to them to work out how to play saxophone. You have grown up in the internet age. So yeah. how much was the internet part of your learning? So for a really long time, it, it kind of wasn't a part at all, apart from listening. Um, I, I started my teaching with Sarah Baker, who runs a, a, a music school uh, in my postcode. Um, and yeah, all the way through grade eight, sh she's been my teacher. She still is. Uh, and then lockdown hit. That's when I suddenly started listening more. I started watching more kind of your videos, the better sax videos, uh, the sax logic videos that were starting to get massive over lockdown. And uh, I yeah, started listening to more players, started playing transcriptions and things. And that's when I started to work out Oh, hang on. I actually really enjoy this thing. Maybe, maybe I could do this as a job. <laughs> when I was at school, about your age, I'd already started doing gigs. Mm. I'd started, uh, and I grew up in a small town, right? So for me, the options were limited. But uh, I ended up playing in like a, a dance band for doing dances on the weekend. That was my gig. It was sort of my introduction to paid work as a 16, 17 year old. Now you're doing some interesting stuff though, Ben. So yes. tell us a bit about the sort of gigs that you're doing. Apart from community bands and stuff, you're actually running a band and doing things too, right? Yeah. So um, in terms of gigs, I do some stuff with a, a wedding band where I'm just a horn player for, and that's exciting not to have any of the responsibility. But um, I also do a lot of arranging and organising for uh, my band, which is called Third Floor Soul. And we're like a little Motown funk soul band. Yeah, that's kind of us. That's amazing. So, you know, at your age 18, you're, you're actually arranging and putting a band together. Uh, like, how did that process start? You did it through, through your college, right? Yeah, so we all, um, most of the band already knew each other from being in a community band together. We got into a community soul band together. And um, out of that, there was a, an in-college battle of the bands that we thought, oh, we should play in that because we've got a good thing. We sound good together. Um, and from there, we started rehearsals. And then the battle of the bands got cancelled, unfortunately. But we thought, well, our rehearsals have sounded really good. Why don't we start doing gigs and things? And out of that, we started regular rehearsals, started to develop a bit of a sound. And we started doing gigs to kind of maybe 100 people, 120 people. That's at brilliant, time. brilliant. I know you've done some busking as well, right? Yeah, I've done busking and things. And yeah. that's kind of how I got into kind of private gigs. So I started busking and then I people started asking me if I would do Ibiza style stuff. Out of that, I got into doing um, wedding band stuff and playing in horn sections wow. for that. And now you've got your license and you've got a car. You can drive yeah, to the gigs. Exactly. The whole Finally. thing. Finally, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Don't need to rely on mum and dad anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember realising that it's although it's great to play in bands, it's even better to run your own Band yeah, and steer definitely. it the direction that you want. And to knowing go. they're all my friends as well, it's it's exciting to play with them. It's like when I get an opportunity to to play with them and then get paid, it's like, well, this is just this isn't work. This is this is just fun. Fast forward to fifty years, fifty years in the future, and that's exactly where I am. Just, yeah. <laughs> just having fun. Still having fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. Right, Ben. So last question then. Uh, what would be the dream gig for you? Imagine that you've finished with your conservatorium studies. What would be the ultimate saxophone gig you'd love to be able to do in a I, perfect world? I think what would be really exciting would to be like a, a resident saxophonist for, for a band, like a massive rock band or something that are doing stadium tours all over the world and just, you know, being just there to do an improvised solo or whatever in a few songs and being part of that band and having that touring lifestyle. And yeah, that would really, really excite me. I think that's the, that's the end goal. That's the dream. But not just that, being able to kind of, you know, write music, play with other people, horn sections are always really exciting. So wherever I can be, but doing that big venues and people paying to come and see a band rather than just being in a wedding band. <laughs>
Thank <laughs> you.